dear friends, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to the Virgo Solar Festival webinar of the 2025 initiative. My name is Alexander and I welcome you on the behalf of the 2025 initiative coordination group. Today is the day of safeguarding for the energy of the full moon and this uh, the day of distribution of the energy of the full moon and as we work with this energy we turn our eyes towards our lives towards our fields of service and we recognize that one of the qualities of virgo is protecting the seed of consciousness within the matter And as much as the enlightened matter can protect the seed of consciousness, the same, the matter that is not enlightened can suppress and put additional pressure to the light of consciousness. So today we invite us to reflect on how we can maintain the light of the soul under the pressure of the circumstances in our life. Our guest to, today is uh, Anastasia Smirnova from Russia, who will share about practical methods that she uses with her group and her work uh, on how to maintain a continuous flow of consciousness. Before we uh, introduce our guest, I want to invite Katya to lead us in the alignment. Hello, everyone. So as we stand in this amazing energy of Virgo, let's get united as a group with energies of light and love and will to good. With three breaths, let's align ourselves within without And we breathe outward. And we breathe upward. And project the lights of our balanced. soul and personality onto the group centers creating strong radiating light in the center of the group we expand that light Connecting it with the light of the new group of world service. Visualize the triangle, Shambhala, hierarchy, and humanity. Christ as a heart of the hierarchy.
triangle about our synthesis, Buddha and spirit of peace. And we see how the energy of our girl, the golden light, is precipitating through those energy points to new group, to people of goodwill, and all working groups. And focusing in our group's heart center Filled with the light of Virgo, we begin our work. Thank you. So welcome to our Virgo sharing. Our guest today is Anastasia Smirnova from Russia. And uh, Anastasia has been our guest several times, sharing the practice of your work with uh, your group and your uh, own practice. And uh, I welcome Anastasia. Hi, Nastya. Hi, it's nice to be here again. Thank you for the honor. And I would happy to share my experience. Uh, I can start? Uh, yes, please. Yes, so okay. I will make you present a nice day that you could show your screen. Okay. So, hi everyone. And we have a uh, not exactly at the webinar, but today we have a masterclass because I strong I am strong believer in the practice world because the changes in our lives should be presented in the matter, and uh, only the matter shows are your uh, things that you do um, successful or not. So today I will show my tips, my uh, philosophy, my way of work, and how I deal with uh, uh, matter and uh, I hope my experience would be useful for you. I ask you kindly to have a pen or pencil paper or somewhere where you, where you can write your questions or ideas how to do some techniques because today I will share a lot of techniques. We will do a lot of meditation but not the classic meditation that we do for full mood but more short version of a uh, different type of meditation work that I use in my everyday practice. And uh, you will, after this webinar, you will have uh, practical tools that will help you hopefully to li live your life uh, better, easier, and with more, with more light, I believe. So, uh, sustain oh my god, sustainability of life, resources, time, and energy. Uh, first, I will start with the philosophy and my uh, way of doing things. It's uh, uh, I start my esoteric work when I was seven, because all of my family was. Uh, member of uh, as a trade group of uh, Alyssa Bailey teaching. Uh, I, I, and because of that, I saw very, very many different groups in work and everyday life because I spent all my childhood in different uh, gatherings, meetings, meditations. And I find out very important thing that you should understand your point of evolution in each action, what it means. For example, uh, many, many 
many, many leaders of esoteric groups was burned out because they tried to be better than they are. And they was uh, taking the loans from other point, like places in their life to be better in esoteric group. And it was uh, a huge mistake because it wasn't working very well. And they were like, was crushed. For example, my, my the great example of that was in uh, St. Petersburg. The leader of uh, esoteric teaching there was very rude with his wife and kid, but very polite with a member of his group. And it was a, such a difference because he can be polite with everyone. So he was rude in one place and very good in other place. And uh, it was a huge catastrophe for everyone, for a member of the group, because they lost their leader and their work for him because he like lost his progress. And it was useless because uh, no one needs us to be better than we are, because when we when when we are in our point of evolution and we're not trying to pretend, we are a much good example for people who are like one step behind us. Because in this universe, like many, many people in the one step behind us and many people far away. And we can be a very good example for people who are like a little bit behind us. So we deal with something and they understand how they will deal with it. So uh, my philosophy shows that you should be uh, very, very true to yourself and not pretend that you're better. And it will help you work and it will gain the respect from others. Because when you was like drinking alcohol and stop drinking alcohol, it's a huge progress. And uh, everyone respect, respects you. Everyone start to like inspired by your way. So my strong belief, never pretend that you are better than you are ever, ever. So you can be true, you can be example, you can make mistakes and uh, it would be easier for you to have mistakes, change them and explain how you fix them. Um, so the second one is under no circumstances to, to overestimate my point of evolution. That means uh, know where you are and you will see the progress and it's amazing. Because if you don't know where you are for yourself, you will never see a progress because you're pretending and you're always disappointed with yourself. When you're not pretending, you are see your progress and you're proud of yourself. Uh, we, I believe that esoteric work is also a very good tool to evolve in your everyday life because in everyday life you have a lot a lot of matter in the means of uh, stress work uh, children other everyday life uh, cases and you don't have enough spirit and you don't have enough inspiration and esoteric work is the same as art as music as uh, philosophy is science it's a way to the like to the heavens to the higher way to 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 build your spirit so you need everyday life meditations to keep up your spirit because you have a lot of uh, matter that consumes your conscious and uh, you should support your conscious with uh, good books good music and very good meditations and uh, I, I believe that you should do meditations every day or almost every day because we have every day a lot of uh, cases that takes our attention, takes our spirit, takes our energy, and we need to refill, refill, refill our resources. Well, I just wanted to ask uh, because I'm sure that you know people who are on the school they do their daily meditations and uh, many of them probably do meditations several times a day. But how would you, because I know that your meditations and um, that you do, they are really somewhat different from the regular or, it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's not a good word about the meditation, typical, but somewhat structured oriented, typical meditation within the teaching that whatever DK gave us, whatever other, other uh, traditions in, um, within ageless wisdom teaching give us. So like, 
when you say meditation, you should meditate daily, what do you really mean? Uh, that's a very good question. Thank you, Kaisa. Uh, I will I will show you five or six meditation a little bit later after I explain the philosophy. So we'll just practice them. But when I do the everyday meditation, I mean they're short, not more than 10 minutes. Most of the time it's three to five minutes. Um, I created a small group of people who have the same issues as I do. For example, uh, because when you gather a big group for big cases like like global education or uh, human traffic and you meditate on that, it's a specific work, you need a lot of concentration. But when you do everyday life meditation, it's enough like two, three participants and they're short and they very, very everyday life uh, uh, questions like how to uh, be calm after a tenth of the uh, hysteric of your kid or how to deal when your uh, relationship's not going well enough and you're dealing with proud on personal level, how to, how to solve that cases. So they are most of the time they are personal or group oriented, not the humanity oriented, because for that we have a bigger group. Uh, they are using group centers, they are using the science of the zodiac science energy that we, we collect for a year. I mean, every, every full moon we collect energy from each science and use it, use it during the, the year for uh, our personal, meditations for our group meditation and for our uh, universal meditations. So I will show the exact meditation a little bit later and you will find out how they, um, what's the difference between yours or maybe no difference. And some of them was uh, customized by myself because uh, I, th I believe uh, esoteric is, a, is like science you need to experiment a lot to find the perfect tool for everyday solutions for for what that will suit your um, needs, for your needs. So that's uh, a little bit later. Is it Thank okay? Thank you. Yes, yes, absolutely. Thank you. So I'm, yeah. And also, uh, we I, I always uh, when i'm in uh, difficult situations and sometimes i am i al always ask the help of a master and we talked with katya and alexander about what is the master because there is a great masters and uh, uh hierarchy but there is also a like i think lesser 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 teachers lesser powers so every every person every person in service as i am is under some guidance and supervising of um, the forces of light so i'm not I, I can't i can't point which exact force it is because for me it's more like when you come to the hospital there's all someone always uh, there Before. to help you yeah on call and uh, for you it doesn't really matter who is it because it, it he will help you and he will help you whatever you need him in the bible which i also use in my philosophy there was a, a saying knock and uh, uh, it will be open door for you ask and you will have receive an answer or help and I use it in everyday life because if, I'm an, if I am already in the wrong situation, in a bad situation, that means I'm already losing. And maybe I have some little bit of conscience to ask my teacher, whatever it is, go to meditation, ask my teacher for help. And I always admit that I was wrong because without this, because without this admitting that I was wrong in my actions and I need help and I need guidance, they actually can't help you because if you just ask them to solve the situation, it won't be a lesson for you. And uh, first of all, it's always life is a lesson. Uh, we use all 10 groups and the relevant tools for growth and evol evolution. Evolution. What is, 
evolution. What, what does it mean? That means that uh, I, all of, I'm very, I've, I see very often that people, not only in esoteric work, uh, tend to use only the tools that present psychology or medicine or politics or uh, education. But to really solve the problem, you most of the time need the several tools from several areas. So I try not to stuck to one uh, to one point of view. I try to use all the ten groups to solve the problems because when the, the meditation doesn't work, maybe political will work or education will work or psychology will work. And that's very important thing because people tend to uh, distance from the others and use only one uh, way and one tool and that was from the past when you need to when you there was a, like six ray was very strong and it was following the path very very directly and it's not like things are now they are very very mixed and the question that we met in our life is very very mixed mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so uh, the thing that I also find out that the more matter in your life, the less spirit, the less, the more spirit, the less matter. But uh, it, I mean, it's affecting your conscious. The more you are in the higher grounds, as music, as uh, science, as uh, esoteric work, the less you are in matter. And for us to work, we need both. We need matter to make results, and we need the spirit to actually be ourselves, be humans, not be uh, zombies, workers, and people who are very, very tight to the ground. And uh, that's what you need to, to, to teach with your life. It's a balance, go to the spirit and go to the matter, go to the spirit and go to the matter. And the most uh, strong training that I, I met when I became a mother, because uh, you don't sleep, you have a lot of stress, you have a lot, a lot of fears, me personally. And it's uh, like matter is consuming the conscious super fast. So I start to do meditations every day and I start to do it in advance. I'm not doing it like I need I need salvation now. I, I do it in advance, like I, I'm doing it in a, in a week uh, up front, in a month up front. And because of, with my society, there's a lot of mothers and a lot of workers and a lot of people who have the same issues in life. That's when we do our meditation work. I put in our group a message and in five minutes, there is like five pluses that they are also interested in meditating. In 10 minutes we are meditating and is everyone like, and uh, every day life is improves, improves, improves. And also we have a feedback. Uh, was the situation solved by the meditation or not? Because also I very, believe, I very strong believe in science. And science shows you, you, you need facts that it's working. So I, we do the researches was it sold? Was it sold fast? What's the difference between past and present? Sure. So, the aesthetic attitude stands in the way of the practical use of the tourism in everyday life, matters of money, relationship, and well being. Uh, I've often find out, because I, I'm a member of many, many esoteric groups, that it's prohibited to use esoteric work in your everyday life. And I believe it's uh, really wrong because uh, if I, I see it as a garbage, for example, you have a dirty uh, yard and there is a dirt, a dirt, like some garbage in the park next, next to your door. So what's most logical way? First, clean your garden or yard and after that go and clean your square next to your or park next to your house and in esoteric work people most of the time do the opposite they start to do the global work and do not concentrate on on their own work and i believe if you have little energy do your own work it will like your your clean uh, yard will take a piece of garbage from the global scale if you have more 
energy, do also the park next to your house. And uh, the world would be cleaner close to you and far to you. But to improve your life, it's easier so you can uh, learn much faster than to do the big matter. And uh, I think it's very healthy to do both. And uh, for learning, it's better to do it with your own life because if you are doing it with your own life, you understand it work, it don't work, it it makes things worse. So I won't do it with other people or with other matters, universal globe, like in universal scale. And I won't make my karma bad in a big scale. So that's that's important lesson of uh, my uh, practice. So, um, yeah, and it's very and the second like the second very big issue is separation your spiritual world and your everyday life, that that uh, make you very very. It okay. It makes me or people I have observed very help okay. helpless, but very very helpless because uh, we need results. We need practice in uh, Alistair teaching and in Bible said that only results shows your the, the, the your progress. motives yeah progress and motives and do you write do you do the right thing or do you the, do the wrong thing and if you don't do yeah, it in your own by the fruit yeah there's expression from the Bible yeah you yeah fruit. Mm -hmm. and if you don't do it in your life you, you actually don't know because uh, because in uh, other cases it's very mixed and you don't know the whole picture so it's always better to start with yourself always at my opinion so uh, you never should separate your life and your uh esoteric work from each other because esoteric life will make your life everyday life much better much fuller much happier and your progress in your personal matter will be will make you a better disciple, right? Right? Yes. Disciple. disciple. The world disciple, because you won't be that affected by uh, by the storm of powers, because you would be much more complete. I hope I, I explained it clearly. I'm I'm not so sure. Well, it is clear. And, yes. Okay. Yes. And. And I use esoteric techniques with uh, while helping of children and teenagers through their struggles at school with the pain of unrequired love. Unrequ uh, it's, it's, yes, unhappy love. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's very easy because when you're suffering and you're suffering very hard and kids and teenagers suffering like much harder than adult people, when you when someone fixing the system it's very easy to observe. So if uh, esoteric work is wor actually working, the kids and teenagers find out it like, like in two meditations. And uh, um, how I start to work with teenagers, most of the time it's when they have uh, uh, exams, they ask me, can I help with exams? I said like, you know, it's uh, very expensive to change the situation like three days before the game is like buying tickets on the game on like on the big uh, baseball game in three days in advance it's, just, it's going to be very expensive and most of the time no good sits but if you do it in a month in the two months you can actually book whatever seat you like it's the same with esoteric work but they say like, okay okay i missed the point I, I understand the point but i have exams in three days like i said great i will help you with meditation but it won't like improve your knowledges because you already have or don't have them but it will keep you calm keep you concentrated and, and keep you yourself it will take the pressure out of you and maybe it will change the thing if you're like actually listen or or learn something and i did it with them like a couple of times and also to their friends, because if one one is panicking, the other other will panic too. And you always need to do it to the group, and not to one person. And uh, after two exams, they said like esoteric work. I'm listening. Okay, esoteric works. <laughs> so they, <laughs> yeah, it worked out for them, and so now they are ready to listen. Okay. Yeah, yeah, because they was actually smart and not like completely lose their lessons but they was always stressed and always panicked and always have uh, some 
something is going on be, be, before the exams and they was like not failing them but not not exactly performing good and so just not, the, not lack of knowledge but lack of inner composure and calm and concentration right it, that's what exactly esoteric work is for so mm -hmm. I, I did i did a circle of protecting energy around them i keep them calm i concentrate their mind about the stress and uh, the, their friends too, because otherwise you always work with the group center, center of the gravity. And teenagers is a groups. It's not one teenager. It's always a group. Adults can be separated, but uh, but teenagers always a group. So you work with the group center, center of gravity, and with whole community, and uh, they actually see results not only on them but on the friends too. And that was a also a big help because you don't really care about yourself that much but your friends is very important and uh like they ask me can i make someone love uh, them that they will fall in love i said no but with the exams i can uh, help you to show yourself with a better <laughs> the better side and maybe it will work maybe it not but maybe it will give you a wisdom to understand that not everyone you're in love you need to build a relationship sometimes it's a friendship or you are not made to each other so why to force the things and with this uh, alignment it it helped me them to to really understand that in a deeper level because when you're in love you don't have brains basically and that was um, like esoteric helps them return their bra brains and still be in love but not not crazy yeah, not and out after, of their mind, literally. Right. Yeah, and after that, it's very easy to convince them every, uh, like, meditate every day. Hmm. Yeah, I, I can second that. As a, as a as a mother of a teenager, I can see that you know if you uh, you know our daughter can help her friends, you know, to stabilize her friends, if her meditation helps them to become stable and less fragile. It works, and she's willing to do that. Actually, yes. So thank you. I can mm -hmm. I can do that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in my work, I use Alyssa Alyssa Bailey books, uh, astrology, healing, light of the soul, uh, and not most of her books, but like I think half. Uh, I also use old and new testaments. And uh, uh, I use some some of the Buddhism basics and some of uh, different techniques because I need uh, I need tools. And the the Buddha says that uh, the the truth it's not is always not in the one teaching. So you should like go and learn from different teachings and find the truth. So mm -hmm. I'm walking and constantly searching and constantly searching because I, when I finished psychology, I was very, very disappointed. They explain us absolutely how to find out the things and they give us zero tools to improve things. So oh. yeah, I was like very, very disappointed at that point. I was thinking maybe there's like like a few more years that I missed somehow. So I, I probably I not always... you mean that uh, when you were acquiring your psychology degree at university. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I did yeah. from university. Yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah. When I was Grecian university, I was like thinking, okay, six years, maybe there's like some somewhere extra too when you have actual tools. So yeah, after that, I start to do in different uh, psychology teachings, uh, like esoteric teachings, to find actual tools to help people. Uh, okay, in my everyday meditation, I use individual, group, and uh, universal etheric centers. Alignment, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. If it takes centers, uh, alignment. Yeah. Yeah. Alignment. There's a lot. Alignment. Yeah. Alignment. Uh, energy of zodiac signs uh, harvested or stored for a year ahead. For example, when it's Virgo, we meditate on we meditate on uh, things that are in motion right now or will be in the future, but also we harvest and store i'm sorry for this simple word store the energy for a year because in uh telepathy and etheric telepathy. 
Telepathy uh, and etheric uh, vehicle, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, they said energy follows the, uh, the thought. So if you thought of uh, some jar, when you will, will keep this energy, you will keep this energy. Okay, so if you, if you visualize, if you create, you know, the image and visualize the image of a storage for energy, that energy will be stored there. Yes. For you and, uh, and for, for and uh, yes for for you for my use for my group work for my universal work for for everything so i use this like energy of virgo the the whole year because uh, to to move matter you need a lot of light a lot of light and also in physics e uh equals year of nmc quadrat it's uh mc squared Yes, it's yeah. Uh, that, that, that that means like how much light you need to move a a, a matter. You so, need another, yes. So yeah, so you need a lot of energy to work with matter because matter is very heavy. Uh, technique of recollection of one's past. That means that when you spend your uh, resources, your time, your energy, your desires for something to achieve something, doesn't matter what. Uh, a university degree, work, education, uh, to run a marathon, mm -hmm. you no. you will spend energy, and this energy stays in the pl in the in the matter that you spend it on, and you need to take it back this energy and let go of the matter. And uh, I use uh, specific techniques. Uh, Katy is uh, familiar with it, and I will, if you will need the specific technique, you can email to Katya. Uh, ten, uh, ten seed groups. That means I am, I'm tending to keep with uh, ten groups and not concentrate only on esoteric work. I also work with the language of economics, of business, of uh, psychology, of medicine, because different people have different languages, and the more languages you are expressed, the more tools you have, the more cases you can solve. Mm -hmm. And also is I am working with the uh, with the setbacks, force of regression, and uh, it's not exactly like I take it exactly from the Alisa Bailey teaching, but they have some uh, some mention of that, but more that in different teachings. That for example, this world is unperfect, like really, really unperfect, and when imperfect. you do stuff imperfect, mm -hmm. when you do something more perfect than the, the average un imperfectness, it creates a wave of uh, this imperfectness. Basically, <laughs> basically some bad things, some karma, some bad obstacles, some senseless uh, energies, some forces of evil, it depends. And the more good you create, the more setback you create. And to deal with uh, this setback on a regular basis, it's very distracting. It's, it's a huge, a huge force of distraction, and the most people are burned out. If you see the scientists that do something good, the artists that do something good, the writers that did something good, the politicians that did something good, they all end badly. Like 95% of statistics. I find out it myself when I was around 20. I was thinking, okay, I want to do something great in life. But why the like all people in history who do something great uh, suffered really badly, or their life ends very fast, or something like really bad happened with them mm -hmm. uh, after they did it? And I find out it's like it's the forces of setback. So when you do something good. You use this energy not only to create something good, but also you imagine the setback and you send this energy because it's endless in this moment to this setback and you neutralize it. Energy follows the follows the thought. thought. You, you create a reason, so you will have a you will have a okay feedback. You will have a feedback from the world, not right now, but in some in some time. So not to suffer, you need to do this work constantly. You do something good, doesn't matter at what at what um, field. 
as a parent, as a you gain money, you did something esoterically worth it, uh, you, you set a setback. So you need to send a lot of energy to neutralize it, or you will pay from your own budget, which is not that wide, to do a lot of good, and uh, it will it might damage you very badly. Mm-hmm. It was damaging me very badly be- before I did. I start to do it every day after every good thing I did. So it's basically, you know, it's 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 rela- it's related to this law. It's a direct law that perfection brings imperfection to the surface, right? Yes, and- but they didn't say it like three times at least more uh, imperfection. At least three times. Okay. So, and also like in physics, and when I was thinking about that, I thought that, okay, when we move through mud, for each step that we move forward, there is a sliding part. And uh, really, if we don't think about this, this, this force, even sometimes physical force that moves us backward, uh, for every intention and for every move forward, you know, we need to have like some as you say triple times support for at least not to slide back at least at least three times uh level like units of energy not to slide backwards right yes. or as i think it's uh, lewis said in alice in wonderland that there are places where you need to run as fast as you can just to stay in one place i believe it's very much uh, related to what you're talking about right yes so okay. also to to support my my routine because I'm not a person of routine for me it's very hard to do something every day I know that's uh, it's my thing so I uh, I create a, a a force that will help me I create a daily meditation group for 30 people when they do exactly like everyday meditation because for the big uh, meditations we have other groups and uh, we have like 60% individual issues, 60% universal issues, issues basically. Uh, we share our resources. That means we don't only meditate, but if someone needs uh, nice uh, and sparkling shoes for a date, we actually can share it. We have some, uh, some amount of money that we, we, ha- we keep for helping people in this group. Uh, because I believe that you, if you're helping in one scale, you might th- think of helping at every scale because I don't believe in separation. Uh, we look at uh, the problems with different angles through the framework of ten- 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 groups because we are different, because we are very different in different, uh, in different uh, states of society, ages, and uh, we work in different hmm. manner. Man- manner and like some of us are like psychologists and some of us are like uh, oh, uh, hospital <laughs> working in the hospital and teacher kids and doing do business and do different things so so almost like as a it's like a meditation group at the slash community yeah slash community because I, i'm not believe in separation Mm-hmm. If you help people to meditate, why won't you help him with the psychology advice or give him a dress or give him some money that you can give? So whatever is shared, shared. It's a shared, shared yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, for example, it's... Uh, uh, it's very, it's a very like, sh- like, short story how it works. Uh, one friend was meditating to do her paperwork done with the taxes. And in Russia, you should do it correctly. You should put like everything correct or they will return you papers. And she will have uh, these papers like 10 times back and she was meditating. And one girl of our, of our group said like, no, 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 we'll, we stop meditating in that case. You need just to call the right person. You should need to, to find out who will receive these papers and what actually they need from you. And the girl who, who was dealing with these papers listened to her and stopped meditating and used this energy and time to actually call the people in this um, governor mm-hmm. office, find out this person. It was a very nice person. They solved this case in 30 minutes. She did her papers. And that's actually how esoteric work is work. Sometimes you can't meditate your papers done, but you 
can meditate yourself to actually uh, start calling or have a good advice or find a person who will actually help you and create a good relationship between you. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So, uh, let's talk about the relationship, the relationship between time and state of conscious, consciousness. Mm -hmm. uh, the more, I'm talking about my experience, the more matter I have on me, the less conscious I have, the less I can use time. So for one day that I don't have a conscious, I can do like a two things, like three things. When I, my, my state of conscious is high, I can do 10, 20, 30 things, and they can be diff in different areas and they can be difficult and, and hard. And my life for the same amount of minutes can be like 10 days or like three hours. So uh, time also relate to will, and you can be a provadnik. Conduit. Conduit, conduit to will only in the very high state of your conscious. So when you meditate a lot, you, your state of conscious is very high. You can be a conduit to will, and will in time connected so the more will you have, the more time you have. And um, if, you ha if you're feeling like your life is going through you and you don't have time to do things, that means you need to uplift your conscious, be better conduct for will, and the time will serve you. So let's do meditations what we, that we do every day. I will try to... Anastasia, yes. yep. uh, maybe it's a good time uh, for uh, if, questions. Ask if anyone has questions here yeah, before we go to the, the short meditations that you prepared for us. Amazing, amazing. I'm happy to answer questions. And especially after this very important uh, note that you share it in terms of relations of consciousness and time. time. So yeah. it's, I think it's a good <laughs> Absolutely. moment. Absolutely. Yeah. Using spiritual will and uh, shifting over to questions. Are there any? So if anyone would like to ask questions, please raise your hand or uh, write them in the control panel in the question section. So far, uh, we don't have any questions. Oh, actually, Frida raised her hand, so I will unmute Frida. Uh, Frida, please unmute yourself. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Um, so thanks, Anastasia. Really interesting presentation so far. I'm looking forward to your meditations. I was very interested in what you had to say with the setback. Do you have a specific technique that you use to um, address uh, these kind of setback issues? Yes, I do. I do. Uh, if you if you give me like two minutes to explain, I will try to to show, to show the picture. When we are in a positive uh, state of conscious, it's one world. When we're in negative state of conscious, it's like a different world. So when we have uh, some inspiration to do things, we are in the high state of conscious. It's not limited. So it's it's a flow. And this flow will go to the question right now. And it also will go to the question for uh, your setback. For example, you're creating a music. You're, you're writing a music and you have inspiration. And you use this inspiration because it's not limited. You write the music and you remember that you will have a setback after because you're already creating something beautiful. So you will use this energy of inspiration not only to write the music but also to meditate the setback so you won't 
fall to the darkness. And whatever you do, you do it with remember of setback because the setback creates in the in the field of your work. When I do my sessions with clients on psychology, I feel a lot of joy. I feel a lot of happiness and I and I'm conduct to the things that person should listen from me or see from me. But it also creates a setback for him and for me. So I'm meditating for him. So this light, this understanding, that happiness, that resolve, I send it not only to the situation, but his setback, like visualize it, this, this flow of joy, and to me at the same time. So I'm not waiting when it will be back, because if it will be presented, I will fall to the unconsciousness and I can't meditate very, uh, very effect effectively, and it will be too late. And for me and for my clients. So whatever you do, I actually started to do setbacks when I was start to rock climb very good, and I didn't do this setback, and I uh, I broke my my hand when I was climbing, and I was <laughs> set back for like two years be before I start I start my progress. Hmm. So after that, I understand like the the setbacks creates in the in the field that you are have a result and you have a success. Physical results, physical setback. Financial results, financial setbacks or, or the same area. Anastasia, so, maybe I can add one word to this to explain. It's, it's about compensating the setbacks. So meditating in, uh, offset. For, uh, to offset the setbacks. So it's kind of paying it forward. So you meditate, precipitating the energy to compensate the setback that will come as a result of the perfection of coming to the matter. And uh, it's what comes to me. It is um, the um, realization. You know, there one where there's a high, there is a low. Always. So when we in a high state of mind, high state of consciousness, high energy level. Um, then everything is easy, but inevitably after that we'll get into somewhat low because just because it's a um, new territory or a new achievement, what, whatever it is happening will be different from our regular state or normal state of life, energy, consciousness. So when we go back, right? we create the compensation not to as if you're like falling downward right just you create a compensatory mechanism through visualizing this energy being spent not only for the high level achievements but also for to compensate or um, pay forward for this potential low because again in our everyday life it is an inevitable unfortunately because our matter on this planet is not perfect. So we deal with it, we deal with it with imperfection on a regular and constant basis. And Don't, did also, it, did it, yeah. And also I use, I use the uh, high ground of the situation. It, it, when it's psychology, it's inspiration of psychology. When it's a rock climbing, it's a happiness of um, doing something physical, but it's always some kind of joy. So I spend this joy and for the moment and I like mentally send it to the future when it will be a setback and I imagine the setback and neutralize it with this joy by my meditation work. And also mm -hmm. we, we collect the uh, signs of uh, zodiac. So we also use this energy to neutralize the other setbacks, bigger ones. Frida? <laughs> oh, sorry. That was wonderful. Thank you. And this is the first thing I taught my students. So I said, like, it doesn't matter how high you climb. It's important how deep you fall. And I don't want you to fall because it's, it's like it will torture you and it will make your path of uh, study very long and very, very painful. Thank you. There is a question. Um, there is a question from Daisha. Uh, 
Um, am I understanding this correctly? Is the state of consciousness related to the amount of higher energy available to live life? I'm, Desha, maybe you could explain your question. I, I'm not sure um, I'm getting it right. If, if you could speak, just please raise your hand. Yes, I will unmute you. Yes, Desha. You were just unmuted. Please unmute you again. There we go. Um, yeah. Sorry, I wasn't very clear. It's it's uh, it sounds like the relationship between time and the state of consciousness has to do with both the quality and also the volume of energy. When um, Anastasia was talking about this conduit of the will it would feel like you had more time to accomplish things. And there's a, a, the upliftment of consciousness improves the conduit for the will, and it's like more time is available. So it's not it just, just quality, it's kind of volume of energy that you're working with. It is true, but when you're, when you're working with your conscious, yeah. You have more time and you have more understanding how to, how to, how to use this time. So it's it's uh, related. It's affecting both ways. Okay. So when you're not wasting your time um, thinking about the past or worrying about the material, when you have more upliftment of spirit then there's a a conduit of flow to live life more joyfully yes does that more make... joyful yeah yeah absolutely okay. more, more joyfully and uh, you have much more things going on in the okay. same amount of minutes great i have understood then thank you thank you Desha. There is also a question from Darcy. Is it likened to the waves of the ocean? It is the rhythm of the incoming and outgoing tides, perhaps. I assume it's a question related to setbacks, of setting setbacks. Is that right, Darcy? Yes, Darcy says yes. Uh, for me, it's not exactly like the ocean because ocean is related to like impact will create the same amount of wave related to the thickness of water. But in our world, it's a little cheatier. So we have uh, three times more and nine times more. And we have it in Bible too. Like uh, what you will put, you will gain, but in three more. Uh, times and uh, at my opinion uh, it feels like you have a lot a lot of unsolved problems and when you do something joyful doesn't matter where you like putting on the light so all the unsolved problems around you like run into you and you and it's not bad it's not something bad but you need to understand that you when you will raise a light the three times or nine times more a matter will come to your light because it's too because you can do only for yourself because matter like it's too much unsolved uh, things so the matter will run to you to your light and if you don't have uh, and you don't have this um, uh, extra light like three times, nine times more, you will be consumed by this matter because for the matter doesn't matter from what she will have this sense, this light, this energy. And I, I don't think it's like ocean. I think it's like, uh, like hungry people. So probably when we talk about matter, we're talking about, about unenlightened matter like hungry matter for the light yeah imagine it like 
uh, it's it's like some average line of of the world. And if you do something higher than this average uh, line, which is pretty everything, because we're a little bit higher than like the center of the world with China, with uh, all the Africa, so it it probably almost everything they do that creates this uh, this setback. And we need to be pre be prepared because. Uh, I have a very nice example from psychology. If you learn something, you need three times more time and three times more energy to put it in your practice. So if you have like well, two weeks time and you will have a two weeks uh, psychology course or master class or something, you will have like 10% of results because you don't have resources to actually put it in your life. And if you have two weeks, you need like go for three days uh, masterclass or webinar. So you'll still have 11 days to put it in your life. I mean, not only time, but energy, money, concentration of attention. It's the same rule here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe uh, Anastasia, this could be one of the meditations that you could do just to we do it together because another absolutely, came absolutely, from yeah, yeah. Back. I will do it right away. How do you do that, yeah. So uh, uh, for for the all question about the setback, let's do the thing. We'll do the setback meditation because we do it often because you always forget to do this sometimes and you don't want a setback ever, ever, ever in your life. Uh, because the more you do, the, the more good things you do, the more setbacks, the more you don't want to met with it. Because at my point of view, setback can be not only three times or nine times, it can be like 100 times when you do something very good for a lot of people. Like if you will do a good university, you will have a, such amount of pain and disaster in your life if you do like something really outstanding good and you don't want to meet with this amount of setback. So also uh, esoteric uh, achievements, esoteric setback, physical achievements, physical setback. And the worst thing is that they can combine. If you do esoteric and physical achievement, you will have physical and esoteric setback together. So it will be strong like esoteric and uh, physical is physical world can be. So we will do the meditation of setback right after the questions. And if you will still have questions, I will answer it hopefully because at my point of view, the thing that stops almost everyone, it's that they don't work with a setback on a regular basis. Because mm -hmm. you all the time have someone who punch you in the face, punch you in the face, punch you in the face. And then you get tired of that, right? You get tired and also to heal your broken uh, face, it's a lot of time. Yep. And it's, if it's not for you, then it's in your environment and it's even harder because at least with it, with you yourself, you can heal, right? But if it has starts happening with somebody close to you or in-, in you, the... also can, you also can heal it, but when it's come to physical, it's age, no, it's, age. it's uh, years and years and years. When it's physical, it's years. It takes me four years to heal my my arm for the previous uh, for the regain the strength. Yeah, yeah, regain the strength. It takes me four years. So the is it very setback like pass by fast. It might be like really destruction, really hard, but it's passed fast. Physical setbacks like gives you like t four years of therapy. Mm -hmm. So. Time-wise, I think now it's uh, good to move into the practical work and uh, sure. no more questions. It's only appreciation of the good idea to demonstrate it in meditation. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So I will uh, like I will explain things maxim ma 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 maxim as easy <laughs> as I can so you can imagine them. It doesn't really matter how right you imagine them uh it will you will find out how it will, well works for you so close your eyes clear your mind uh also when i do meditation i put the 
protective shield. Imagine the light of the soul and uh, make a sphere around us, around our work, work, so we are protected by light of our souls, group souls, group soul. It's uh, like sunshine that covers all of us. After that, we create uh, etheric uh, centers in the middle of our group, and we put the sign of Virgo above us. And every one of us imagine something good he achieved in uh, different things. For example, I prepared this webinar. And we imagine the setbacks. I imagine it's like a dark, dark, a big uh, wave, but not one. I imagine nine waves, one after one after one. For me, for you, and for us as a group, because it's different. You don't work only with yours or others, but with all of them. I always invite a teacher, so we imagine a teacher that observes and supports us and ask him for guidance, help, and protection. And if we do something wrong, we, I ask him to stop us and to show what is wrong. We imagine energy of Virgo and the a life interest that we are sharing right now and we send this energy energy of birga energy of our group souls and energy of our interest to these dark waves and uh, we transform them to the light waves to the lives of uh, transformed matter it's not absorbed it's evolved to to changes it it changed colors from dark to light. Okay, and now we imagine all the setbacks that are in motion, but not arrived yet. We don't know about them. We don't remember what of our actions create them, but there's a lot. So we imagine a lot of waves on the universal scale, personal scale, and group scale. So through these uh, centers, we put the energy of Virgo, group soul, and the uh, this um, high point of our conscious to these setbacks and we are changing them to the change their color from dark to light and also we do it sometimes for our loved ones or our children when we meditate
we close our meditation, we clear our vision and group space. We send thank you to the to the teacher who is helping us. And we are back to the real world. So this is the basic meditation of setbacks. And I do it several times a day and I do it for different people. And I do it every day, every time I work. Because uh, I believe that I, when I work, I do something good. So do you have any questions after this meditation? I would be happy to answer them. Yes, this year, time-wise, I think we have uh, time for no? another small meditation okay. just to demonstrate to your techniques and then for closing, summarizing uh, meditation. I'm sorry, Alexander, I can't hear you. We have time for probably one more. Sorry, I still can't hear you. So is, can you hear now? Anastasia, can you hear me? I'm sorry, I can't hear you, Alexander. I can see that you're speaking because my mic microphone is moving, but I can't hear you at all. Uh, Frida, can you hear me? I unmuted you. Can you say if it's a problem on our end or? Anastasia, can you hear me? It's Frida. It's, uh, it looks like there's a problem with audio on Anastasia's side. Uh, Frida, we can't hear you. Okay, so I'll just mute myself again. Um, maybe just text her that to, to you know, go to a next meditation, yeah? Mm -hmm. Hello. Yes. Nastasia, we can. I can hear, hear the Alexander. You, mm -hmm. Okay. Да. Hello. Мы тебя слышим. We apologize for this technical difficulties. We're trying to restore the connection. Now. Can you hear me? So um, the the sound is off for me, but I believe you can hear me, so I can continue the meditation. Can you hear me? So, if you can hear me, I would uh, continue with meditation. So we can have a maximum from this uh, webinar. Yes, no? Hello. Okay, wonderful. 
so I, I have the, uh, the answer that you can hear me. Um, the, our meditation is basically very up to date because we live in modern world so we have uh, modern problems and with the COVID we have a lot of panic we have a lot of depression not like real depression but very bad mood very a lot of uncertainty so we every week we do a meditation on uh, removal of anxiety caused by COVID-19 and I will do it for you so you can use it in your everyday life and in uh, life of your people who are you attached with, work with, your family, friends, and as a trade group. So we close our eyes, we visualize the protective shield from our souls, we united our souls to one soul, we invite the teacher to our work, We visualize the etheric centers in the center of, of our group, and we uh, visualize the Taurus, Pisces, and Virgo. Because we collect the energy, we use the energy the whole year, and we feel when the full moon coming. So you will imagine the signs as a triangle and uh, second thing you imagine is uh, the fear of COVID as a waves of uh, smoke not only around you but around in you around you but around your family around your media around your life so you imagine it in the future not only for today but for the next month for example around you around your family around your working uh, community and uh, you imagine uh, energies of Taurus, spices and virgo and they are cleaning the space they clearing the smoke and air become clear again not only around you but around the whole system you are living in we're going back and forth a few times with our visualization We do a deep breathe out. And we dissolve, we clean all the visualization we made. So we come back to ourselves, come back to the world and open our eyes. And also it's very practical meditation because you can check, is it working or not? For example, uh, one week you can clean your spaces and one week you can not clean your spaces and you can check the difference. Is there any, any difference? How you feel? Does it work or not? That's why I said I can't hear any more uh, Katya and Sasha. But that happens.
Thank, Thank you, Anastasia. You, oh. We are now uh, coming close to the end of the webinar and we are now trying to call Anastasia and on the separate line just to restore waste connection. But so. Uh, Mm -hmm. um shall we continue what's up okay uh one second i will find out my uh what's up maybe i can call telegram okay uh, one second i will call on whatsapp Okay, and uh, while Anastasia is uh, trying to contact us, which is uh, interesting and significant that you know this loss actually happened after our meditation. Um, while I was doing this meditation, you know, on those waves, I realized that when I was creating that change of color, I realized that around one of my family members, it's not even the waves it's, um, it's almost like the rocks uh, we have nesta on uh, anastasia on um, on the whatsapp so hold on a second We have Anastasia now on connection, so we restore it via WhatsApp. And I suggest we have a, the summarizing meditation. Uh, what do you think, Nastya? We can hear you on the webinar, so you can keep uh, talking. Yes. So what do we do next? I suggest we have a summarizing meditation to uh, collect the fruits of our sharing today and uh, lift it to the light of Virgo, or if you want to do any other meditation. Okay, uh, I would like to do the meditation or with potentiating. Potentiating. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, is it okay? Oh, go ahead. So, here I felt restore the group unity. We build a group centers. We Visualize uh, signs of Virgo. We visualize our year of uh, esoteric work, of uh, our personal work, of our group work, of our relationships. We imagine people with whom I will work for the year and for whom we will connect. And we put energy of Virgo and energy of our group soul in uh, our projects, our work, our esoteric work, and our practical life. And we will do it by months. So we imagine September 2020. And we put the energy of Virgo in our work, service, and personal life. And hobbies. October,
November. December. January. February. March. April. May. June. July. August. And we go back, imagining the setback of our bachelor life and our achievements. And we put energy of Virgo 
to neutralize this setback. The summer of 2021. Personal group universal. Spring 2021. Winter 2021. Winter 2020. And autumn 2020. Mm -hmm. Also, I would love to read the Great Invocation. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the, sun, from the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the little wills of man, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the race of man, let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Oh. 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 And we coming back from the meditation to this world. Thank you very much for your attention, for this chance to work with you. If you have extra questions, you can always connect with me. And I'm uh, passing the word to Sasha. Thank you, Anastasia. Despite of the problem with the connectivity, the energy is there. And we really appreciate your presence and your sharing. And your knowledge and, and your practice. And thanks, uh, everyone who joined us today. And thanks for uh, being part of the circle. And if you have any questions, please. Uh, send them to us and uh, we will forward them to Anastasia and yes and uh, if you if you didn't understand something and uh, 
whatever additional questions you might have, um, please do write. And uh, and I hope that you know at some point we're going to have another meeting with Anastasia because I believe that this is a new generation of esotericists that are working now and uh, it is our duty to support that not only with our um, hearts and minds but also with our work and service so it's good to know how we work in a different way and support one another thank you and we continue our journey together and we invite you to come to join our coming webinars we continue our daily meditative vigil at 8 p.m gmt focusing on the shift of consciousness in humanity in response to the current crisis on september 18th we will have the virgo uh, segment of the open forum where we will continue our meditation and sharing on how we could utilize the opportunity of working together through the cycle of the new moons to help humanity. On September 19th, uh, we have the second World Porter Creative Lab at 7 p.m. GMT. This lab is a workshop to craft the new vessels to express the ageless wisdom essence for our times. And on September 29th, we invite you to join us the third meeting of the Awakening the Souls of Our Nations Creative Lab. Much love to you and gratitude. Until we meet again. <laughs>